Syria, land of the apostles and of martyrs, a land that gave the world the word Christianity. It was here that the prophet Elijah was sent by God to anoint Hazel as king of Aram. According to tradition, it is from this land that Elijah was taken up to heaven to escape the pursuers sent by Queen Jezebel. The holy prophet Elijah is venerated in Syria to this day. This cave is the place from which he is said to have disappeared on a chariot of fire. People believe the hoof marks still visible in the stone were made by horses harnessed to his chariot. How covered in glory art thou, Elijah, by your miracles, and who can boast to be your equal, you who were taken up in a whirlwind flame on a chariot harnessed to horses of fire? With the coming of Christians, a place of worship was built where the faithful venerated the prophet, while in the 9th and 10th centuries, monks added splendor to the walls of the church by covering them with frescoes. This land also witnessed the miracle experienced by St. Paul in his conversion to Christianity on the road to Damascus. Suddenly, while he was traveling to Damascus, there came a light from heaven. He fell to the ground and then he heard a voice saying, Soul, soul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? he asked, and the voice answered, I am Jesus, and you are persecuting me. After he had spent only a few days with the disciples in Damascus, he began preaching in the synagogues, Jesus is the Son of God. Some time passed, and the Jews worked out a plot to kill him. To make sure of killing him, they kept watch on the gates day and night. But when it was dark, the disciples took him and let him down from the top of the wall, lowering him in a basket. Subsequent to St. Paul, these lands witnessed the spreading of the good news by St. Tecla, one of St. Paul's pupils. St. Tecla was St. Paul's convert. She came from Turkey, from the city of Iconium. She was a pagan. She became a Christian following St. Paul's missionary work in Turkey. Because Christians were persecuted by pagans there, she came here to Syria to preach in Ma'alua. The region around Malula is unique, as here the local population still preserved an Aramaic dialect to this day, a dialect that is considered to be a close relative of the language that our Lord himself spoke. Aramaic is still spoken here. The inhabitants became Muslims, but the fact that they still use this language indicates that earlier on they were Christians. They kept the language but converted to Islam because they needed to gain employment. Syria is a Christian country. It was not until the 7th century that its conversion to Islam began, either by force or by conviction or compromise or by other means. Syria did not adopt Islam in one go altogether, and this is why we have villages that are wholly Christian. Islam is the dominant religion in Syria, practiced by 90% of the population. Muslims conquered the country in the first half of the 7th century, with Arabian forces appearing along the southern frontier even before the death of the Prophet Muhammad in the year 632.
The dominance of Islam today, however, obscures the historical religious roots of Christianity which lie deep in the heritage of this land. This land, the cradle of Christianity, is the source from which sprang many of the Church Fathers, wise men and theologians who taught and furthered the Christian faith. Despite common roots, the Oriental Christian Church has since separated and divided such that today it is made up of six different rites and nine churches. The largest of these groups are represented by the Greek Melkite Orthodox and Greek Melkite Catholics. Across the centuries, many of these churches have entered into communion with Rome, while others, such as the Orthodox churches, have, since the Second Vatican Council, been recognized by the Catholic Church as truly sister churches. Often within a single family, one brother might be a Catholic while another Orthodox, or cousins might belong to different churches, yet remain one family. We have villages that converted to Catholicism as recently as 50 or 100 years ago. These people, having asked to be united with Rome, feel themselves Catholic, while continuing to maintain an unchanged religious and secular way of life. Despite these historical divisions, daily interaction between the churches is evident on many levels and is a sign of hope for the re-establishment of the communion of churches. Recently, together with the newly arrived Orthodox bishop, who is very open and who seeks contact with us in a spirit of dialogue, we have started to prepare a program of Jubilee Year celebrations, as well as for the Week of Prayer for Peace. There is, for example, a joint Catholic and Orthodox pilgrimage planned to Old Antioch, the starting point for Christianity. For it is indeed here that Christians were for the first time referred to as Christians. Syria is an extremely fascinating country. At the same time, uh, it is a very important country because Syria will play an important role as well in the regaining, hopefully, of the communion of churches. Syria for me is a country of hope which is represented in its extreme richness of Christian life and of Christian presence. <laughs> that Christian presence is most strongly marked in Syria by the nature of the religious life within families and parishes. <laughs> 